Folks, welcome back. Today, I wanted to revisit a very, very interesting product line. One of the, uh, wow, there's a lot to talk about on this. This was one of the most successful mastered product sets that came out at the beginning of 2023. And I, I, it's such a complicated conversation. People, the overall consensus is it was so successful Wizards overprinted and destroyed it. And it's unbelievable what you can get from these things. And these boxes hit a low, and we're on an Amazon dump now. And these things were like around 100, 110 bucks on the Amazon dump. Or something like that. And, it, and on TCG Player, they have tanked all the way down to a low of around 100. Now they bounce back to about 130 plus tax. Extreme volatility. So today... My patron over here, um, actually, he's got his own little uh, TCG he's trying to get off the ground here, old Mithril TCG, um, has purchased these two boxes. We're going to open them. We're going to talk about what's going on. And we're going to kind of, well, revisit, are these things being mispriced? Is there something bigger going on? Or is it really just a classic example of something that's so good and so just well-made that was destroyed by overprinting and destroying the whole thing. I've never, I've never actually opened Dominar Remastered Draft Packs. I've never. We did the collector boxes, and I loved them back in the day. This is the first time I've ever actually opened the standard draft. And I am blown away. I just can't remember. <laughs> Arcanus, I hated that card. Lol. Okay, so you get a rare, I guess a, a retro frame. Is that how this works? And then land token. Is that kind of what we're looking at here? I guess the reason I have all those piles. Um, I never did. I never actually did the draft ones of these. I wasn't, you know, I was so pumped. I loved the collector boxes. Thing. It was. I mean, I heard the, the card quality is phenomenal. They still look phenomenal. Beautiful Sarah Angel there, and Grim Lava. Nice little, uh, nice little box topper. Oh, just like a little instruction card over there. The Grim Lava again. I remember selling this card in Core 2012, folks. I remember selling these. These were five dollar bills, my friend. And then of course we had our first foil common. Swamp and that, okay. And I just, the argument right now is can a product like this ever recover? Or is it just simply to, God, that's crazy to see Savannah Lions as a common from a rare. That's crazy, man. Factor Fiction, very nice. Tormund's Crypt, great uncommons. Uh, Awakener for the retro frame. Oh, did I miss a rare? Maybe I missed a rare right there. Uncommon, uncommon. But four uncommons? I didn't miss a rare? Oh, okay. Just a retro rare? Okay, I thought I thought I missed a card. And right now, the consensus of the market, distribution everybody, is the product was overprinted. Wizards got too greedy because of the extreme success of Time Spiral Remastered, and they completely annihilated it. God, lay. Sneak Attack Retro from Urza Saga. Dang, man. That brings back some memories. Holy smokes. It's just, it's so crazy... Like, are we, are we, like, you know, think about this. This is like a hundred and something dollar booster box. Like, even 130 plus tag. Okay, 150 a box on TCG Player. Okay. And it's like, oh, look at that beautiful counter spell. And you have cards like Sneak Attack. Isn't this a set with the, the Vampiric Tutors? Um, I think even Force of Will. I think this is like even the cheapest set. Is this the cheapest set ever made that has Force of Will in it? Jester's Cap, amazing hit there. Blink. Our first, no, I'm sorry, our second little common foil there. It's a very strange experience. And it, it's kind of, this product is in the same boat as a Modern Horizons 2 situation. Where, you know, nobody's arguing the actual, you know, quality and how good the product was. <laughs> Dragon Whelp. People are just arguing about how much was printed. And the actual state of the secondary market. And the state of just, well... The amount of variants and versions, and single cards just falling apart. Chain Lightning in common. Spirit Link in common. My goodness, the amount. Like, this is one of those sets that's just, it's wild, man. <laughs> Arcades. Anybody know what this is? Elder Dragon? Arcades? Anybody? Anybody? I'm not going to say it. Anybody going to know what that's from? Lost Legends? 1994? Legends? It's just, it's crazy, man. It is so, I, that's one thing I definitely got wrong. I never saw... The market conditions coming right now. Denizen of the Deep, our first, uh, I guess, borderless. I didn't even know you could get that in the draft. I, thought, I think, aren't there like certain cards you can only get in the collectors, though? 
Maybe we can't even see certain ones. That, oh my god, Cloud of Fairies? Is that Urza's Legacy? High Tide? Wow. Squirrel Nest. We got a, we got a land in here. The old Hinterland Harbor. We actually got our first land cycle there. Old school Ornithopter. And a little token thing from the deep. And, um... You know, I don't have an answer to this kind of thing anymore. You know, many times I'd be very confident in things in the past, but Street Wraith. And, uh, golly, there's so many cards I recognize, you know, going the Lotus. And, wow, Lotus Blossom, bring back memories there. Terror, old school, I remember that one. And a Foil Rare, the Vexing Sphinx. And that's a little disappointing in the Foil Rare slot. And I remember thinking, you know, in the past I make videos. Like, if you're an Alpha Investment person, you watch my videos for many, many years on here. In the past... I make many videos about the direction Scars of Mirrodin, Urza's boxes, how underpriced, wow, Retro Cemetery. And I make many videos talking about how underpriced, Opportunity, Avacyn Restored, Zendikar, all these things, Kanza Tarkir at $99, all this stuff. And now when I look at this, I'm like, but what about Icy Manipulator? Jeez. You know, the Recluse? God, that one got reprinted? Chain Lightning? Jeez, really? Retro Chain Lightning. And now this is a situation. Where it's not really whether or not there's good reprints in a product like this, but it's about, you know, can it actually recover from the original downward pressure in the massive reprint that did damage to the product? Lyra, down, wow. God, in, in foil, can you imagine how good that probably looks? Elvish Spirit Guide, I think it's Alliances, right? God, really, that was an epic card. Passivism in foil. And that's kind of where it's at, because, and again, a lot of people right now are very concerned about reprint equity you know can they just endlessly reprint over and over i mean are they going to run out of cards of value there's a lot of conversation that <laughs> evil eye of orms by gourd flipping common holy smokes that's that's kind of sarah angel jester's cap retro auctioneers <laughs> auctioneers javelineers so the market has lost all hope essentially at this point that even good products like Domino Remastered, or like, you know, Modern Horizons 2. Golly, look at that. Mesa, voice, in a crop rotation. Harbor. Man, there's a lot of, there's, like, this set has so many good cards. And these boxes are so cheap. It's, un, like, it's just mind-boggling. And even then, I mean, good, nobody wants to touch this stuff. People are panicking. They're high tide retro. Wow. Wall of junk. Oh, yeah, Wizards is a wall of junk, you know. I mean, it's just, it's just a really weird thing. And like I said, I want to kind of go back, because I remember the beginning of 2023. Was it beginning of 2023? Or how old am I? Is this 22? I was, I was like, oh my god, am I in the wrong year? Drew it. It's like, Maze of Ith. Jeez. Okay. And a Juggernaut. Wow. The pools in these things. Holy cow. Like, I remember when this thing came out, it was a home run product for Wizards of the Coast. This was a very, very successful product, folks. And Reclamation, Street Wraith, and nothing. And everyone says, well, yeah, that's what happens. If a product is good, Wizards, well, the print runs so high, they just completely annihilate it. And it just, it kills it. And then when, because of that, there's another, how many times has Swords of Plowshare been printed? Forgotten Ancients. We got a little renewed faith there. And it's one of those conversations where, uh, well, if everybody stops believing, and everybody believes that nothing's ever going to do anything, you got a major uh, consumer confidence issue on your hand. And two, look at this. Like, look at these packs, man. This is like, this is under, this is not even a two, this isn't a two, three, four hundred dollar set box, draft box. These are 130 plus packs. These are 150 dollar boxes on TCG player to your door right now. These aren't even, like, it's insane. Like, the, it's just, wow, congregate. Another land cycle, uh, retro frame sulfur. So. Um, obviously, I, I believe this product is out of print, but I don't know if that means anything, because the fact that the supply of unsold bots there, Avatar, is, uh, that was a mythic, I don't know if it even matters anymore, turnabout. Foil, retro, rare, these things are beautiful, but only uncommon. At this point in time, you know, I mean, look, let me, I guess we're 10 minutes in, let's, let's be a little bit more straightforward about it. I mean, this product just got hit on Amazon dump, Okay. The fact that it's on an Amazon dump reinforces, golly, Crawl Space, Savannah Alliance. The fact this thing got hit on the Amazon dump means that Wizards, well, they can be out of print all you want, but that means they, they're still printed. They, they overprinted it, and they're sitting on excess inventory. Dampening Sphere, great. Windborne Muse, wow. Dark Withering. 
And unfortunately, once a product gets labeled as an Amazon dump item, it's it's now going to be it's like stunting growth, and it's going to be stuck there. Cat beast and uh, the Drake. You're going to freeze any attempt at growth or price appreciation for a minimum of six to twelve months. Period. Anything that gets hit by an Amazon dump, I mean, it, you're you're going to completely destroy consumer confidence in that product line for a while. And that's, you know, that's sad because that just shows that, you know, in my opinion, it probably wasn't the best well-managed then. I don't know. Ooh, Worldly Tutor in retro frame. Wow, okay. And I know there's going to be people going to watch this video. Well, good. It's nice to see the evil investors like Rudy get hammered finally. I got tired of seeing everything old go up in value. Sylvan Library Retro. Dang. You know, there'd be a point in time. This would be like a $50 Mythic reprint. Like, ima imagine, like, if you bought this on the Amazon dump at like 100 bucks. Like, I couldn't even get this. Dude, these things were like one. Weren't these like 140, 150 wholesale? I think I remember selling these for like 170 to patrons. It was insane. And imagine, like, these are your types of Mythic. These are the pool. This is the pool of cards. And it's so cheap. It's so cheap. And it's like, that's insane. Uh, I don't even remember that card. Okay. Blink. Oh my god. Look at that. A foil worldly tutor. Dang. Like, that's crazy. To have a product in a card pool with, like, sneak attacks and Sylvan libraries. <laughs> you know? And don't forget, Force of Wills. Like, it's unbelievable that these are cards that you can pull for a product at this price point. And I don't know, maybe it's more unbelievable they couldn't sell it all. And, and oh my god, is that our third worldly tutor? Fact or fiction? I think it's three worldly tutors in this box. Like, like you know, even Force of Will. Like, Force of Will was like a hundred dollars. Dude, fact or fiction. I remember Zerthy Enchants. They're a great card from uh, Cold Snap, was it? Like, imagine this. Imagine going back to when Eternal Masters came out, okay? $400 boxes, Eternal Masters, super tight print run, that whole thing. You remember all that stuff? Imagine going back to that, okay? Test of Endurance, there's another mythic there, with a retro Tormund Crypt. Imagine going back and thinking, and remember the Force of Will. I remember the foil Force of Wills from Eternal Masters, Icy Manipulator. No joke, I remember. God, that looks beautiful, holy cow. I remember, ladies and gentlemen, 10 years ago, or 9 years ago, for selling foil force of wills from eternal masters you ready for this for five hundred dollars a card mystic remora hello i remember folks the foil fancy force of wills in eternal masters the first time ever that the force will was reprinted and it's not reserved list i remember that whole thing and i remember how insane and it's like it was great like you could get a five hundred dollar the only foil force of will besides maybe like a promo or something. It was a crazy, crazy, crazy time, folks. And now to see an era. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this pack. Holy crap. Look at this pack, man. Like how crazy is this? Like this isn't a four or five hundred dollar box. Look at the pools you can get. Like it just shows how much damage has been done. By Hasbro in the market. This is, whoa, this is, God, I can't, it's been so long, Wrath of God and a Drake. It's so long since I've cracked this thing. It blows my mind that these were Amazon dumps, man. And it's just, you know, and everybody's just asking the same question. It's just Stroke of Genius. Wow. Stroke of Genius. The old card draw from Urza's back in the 90s. Dang, that brings back memories. But that is, you know, that's, these are all, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. They're side effects of poor management, improper print levels, and I don't know, do you want to just say straight greed and overprinting? Hunting grounds, there's another mythic. You know, I mean, that's, I don't, I don't really, and then of course, you're always going to get the people, and you get a couple comments below, or they'll think it and say, well, you know, we're really good. These are all game pieces. There shouldn't be anything like that, Cemetery. Wild growth. Necrol Savant. You, you know, we're going to get that. We're going to have the people, ooh, it shouldn't. You know, all, they're just game cards. You know, you shouldn't be treating it. That's why the stock market and mutual funds exist. You're always going to have people that are not going to fully understand and respect and be aware 
of the ecosystem of the thousands of stores, what makes magic stable, what makes the economy move. And at the end of the day, folks, oh, look at that. Is that a magic 30, Birds of Paradise? Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's playable. You know, you're always in, you, you're always going to have people that fail to understand the importance of a healthy ecosystem. And at the end of the day, I know we're late in the video. No one's, wow, look at that in tune. No one's going to care or watch. But let me just say this. Let me, let me say something. Let me give you a real hot take. The only reason Hasbro and Wizards are even able to do all this and charge crazy prices is because of the secondary market. If that's all there really is to it. You want me to sum up the entire conversation? The only reason that they're even able to sell $400 set boxes of Commander Masters is because of one reason. Ooh, look at that nice legacy weapon. And an impulse, very nice. The only reason they can do that is because the cards have secondary market value. So whenever people, you know, get all angry because cards and value and money and investors and collectors and stores, you know, those are individuals who don't want to discuss the entire ecosystem. They may not like it, which I, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with being unhappy or not liking it. But many times, a lot of people just aren't informed or fully aware of the complexity of this ecosystem. The secondary market and economy is a massive one. And again, if, if for example, you know, buy the singles, oh, another sneak attack, really. Only buy the singles. Like if nobody ever bought a sealed product and all this stuff changed, you know, I mean, the impact on the market and the prices and how much things would change would be pretty body snatcher. Wow, that's crazy. That's an Urza's card again. So crazy how many Urza's cards are in here. You know, Hasbro and Wizards would be in a lot of trouble. Let me just put it that way. They'd be in a lot of trouble because you cannot sell expensive magic card sealed product if the cards don't have value. And we learned that in situations like Dragon's Maze, Boulder's Gate. We've seen, you know, Midnight Hunt, Crimson Vow. We've seen what happens. Oh, Sulfur. When, well, you know, you try to price something. Boulder's Gate was the biggest example of it all, okay? Another Zerth the Enchanter. Boulder's Gate is a classic example. They jacked the price at the stores. We had to pay $230 for a collector box. I thought I was doing a good thing selling to patrons for, you know, $249. And, you know, well, unfortunately, when the cards within the box, well, don't have much value. And the cards that do have value, you can't get them, and they're so tough to pull. Well, the value of the box collapses. Well, and then you have a situation that we have now. God, like that mystical tutor. Where they're still, a year later, putting Boulder's Gate collectors on Amazon dumps because, well, Wizards of the Coast can't sell it. So they have to fire, sell, and reduce prices. Now, at the end of the day, if they had just, ooh, look at full shipping. If they had actually just lowered the price or increased the cards that people wanted, you could have recalibrated that better. So it's a very complicated kind of dirty thing, I see. Stroke of genius again. Well, no force of wills, by the way, in this video. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. We have not had a force of will. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Squirrel, Ruins, for, ah, Forgotten Ancient. That was that reprint from uh, Conspiracy 2, Take the Crown. But that's kind of, so conclusion of this video, I want to do one a box opening like this because it's been so long since I've cracked something, Dragon Whelp Retro, from Dominar Remastered. And I never got to do the draft. I only did Collectors. And this box opening just simply reminds me of how good of a product this is. And it's incredible. God, Hinter Harbor. Ooh, nice recoil. It doesn't matter how good the cards are. It doesn't matter how good the product is. Because, well, we're in a situation where, you know, bad management, improper print run levels, improper calculations at management level, higher ups, well, they screwed up. And the issue is we all kind of wonder the same thing. Triskelion, wow, Antiquities reprint, Turnabout. We all, at the back of our minds, are thinking the same thing, folks. And that is, what happens... When enough people start getting frustrated or concerned, gamble. Another Urza's card. Wow. Mystic. Wow. Lotus. Wow. Lotus Blossom Foil, too. Holy smokes. That used to be a big deal. You know, what happens when enough people start to back away? Well, because everyone's just like, I'm just not going to buy because they're going to dump it. It's going to collapse. And we, you start to cause a lot of damage to your own brand. And that's what we saw happen with everything from Hasbro stock to magic the company and the supplies and we're seeing prices we're seeing a lot of volatility and issues absorb duress and wild growth 
And, you know, that's... If you really damage a lot of consumer confidence, stores aren't going to order as much. People aren't going to buy as much. Wow, Arborio. Wow, that's a lit impulse. And a foil beautiful squirrel's nest there. And that's that's what I believe we're still at the biggest risk of magic is. I'm not trying to be a super end-of-the-world Debbie Downer magic is dead, because I don't believe that is the case. <laughs> B-girl and Mogwar Marshall. But we, we do have a real issue that eventually Wizards is going to have to address and Hasbro is going to have to address. Now, I've been on record, personally, thinking that I think the way they're going to solve... Frank, God, no force of wills. The way they're going to solve or address, as I like to say in this video... Uh, we're almost in the end, folks. Only four packs left. The way I think Wizards is going to address this moving forward is more gimmicky, unique cards. I think they're going to go in a different direction. I really do. Helm of Awakening. I don't think they're going to go with lowering prices. I don't think Hasbro will allow it. <clears throat> I think what's going to happen is unique, weird, gimmicky things. They're going to try to create or supplement the value in a different way versus lowering prices. But I still remain very concerned on like those Commander Masters, oh, those set boxes, man. God, Lee, another sink. God, our third sneak attack in just two boxes. And see, that's my point. That's why they're not worth anything. That's why an amazing old Urza's card that used to be worth a lot isn't. Well, yeah, and that's it. Look at that. And again, these aren't three $400 master boxes. These are Dominaria remastered. And you still get insane mythic pools. And the pool of cards is quite strong. So I still believe at this point in time, eventually Wizards is going to keep kind of firing on all cylinders and really grinding the market and with high prices. But I think they're going to go in a pivoting direction with more, you know, now they're all about the serialized thing. 2023 is really, you know, the serialization, you know, between the end of 2022 with Brothers War and the 2023, March the Machine with the multiverse. I think the serialization thing and what they learned with the one of one Lord of the Rings I, I think that's going to continue to be more in a direction they're going to lean into. I still believe we're going to start seeing sketch cards, signed cards by artists, redemption cards. Similar. I think they're going to go more into the sports card direction. And I think that's how Magic is going to be able to justify very high-end premium products. Because, well, when Force of Will used to be over $100, and a foil Force of Will used to be $500, and you, you completely milk that and collapse it down to 50 bucks. And, well, when you have cards like Sylvan Libraries and the Tutors and the Sneak Attacks and, and all the value of them is down 50, 60, 70% from their highs and what people used to trade and buy and sell them for, you know, stores are going to adjust their behavior. And that's what we're seeing, folks. Um, again, that's all I have today. Thanks again to the old uh, Mithril TCG over here for uh, being a very kind patron. Enjoy all the cards heading your way. And um, definitely, a, boy, a throwback on memory lane here on Dominar Remastered. Still a great product. I, I can't even say anything negative about the cards. Still a great product.